Hey everybody, I've got a great video for you today. A 1950 Dodge pickup truck. Rare in and of itself, but imagine this one was last titled in 1965. It's sitting in this tiny shed, probably three feet on one side, three feet on the other, no electricity, super dark, middle of nowhere, junk all over the place, the bed's full of junk, uh, it's the front sunk in the mud, the back has no wheels on it, um, and I'm going to try to get this thing running. Uh, I have to deal with in this one incredible heat, darkness, uh, a crazy storm that Mother throws out, Mother Nature throws at me, um, uh, tight clearances. I mean, I could barely get the camera in some of these angles in this one, um, but this truck is awesome. You got to see it. I think you're going to like this one. And at the end, I'm going to give you a teaser for my next video, which is probably my most crazy one to date. Today, I'm going to attempt to rescue this guy. This is a 50 Dodge pickup, half ton. It's been in here forever, forever. It's uh, got the original flathead. Sunk in the mud. It's the garage is real tight, so apologize for the video. That looks like maybe a radio. Um, the cab's pretty solid. No seat. Gun rack. Look at that. A gun rack. Wow. And I thought that was an 80s thing. Had a heater in it. Oh, it's got the key in it. Isn't that nice? Not used to that. Uh, looks like the shift is on the tree. This is probably a three speed. Missing the running boards. Like I say, very tight in here. But this is going to be fun. This truck has all kinds of interesting stuff on the back of it. Um, you know, old Hot Wheels, not that old. I mean, some of these are, but some of them aren't. Um, all kinds of stuff, a beer bottle that hasn't been opened, tape, tape measure, six foot tape measure. That's gonna come in handy when I try to find where the wheels are for this thing. Uh, battery charger. Oh, wow. Is this thing maybe 6 volt? Yes, it's 6 volt. That may come in handy. This truck is 6 volt. I've got a battery for it, but you never know how often I'm going to have to turn this thing over. Um, what else? We've got a weed whacker in, on this thing, which is probably better than mine. Look at even a leaf blower. Albums. Charlie Rich. Very special love songs. Peter Pan peanut butter. Get this thing out of here. It's grossing me out. Uh, fossilized peanut butter. Maybe paint. Maybe. Grease. Album from Grease. Matlock Realty. All right. I wonder if that's Ben Matlock. Probably not. All kinds of tools hanging up. Just oddballs, you know? Oddball tools everywhere. Some boots, which are great for the snakes around here. Another album. Expressions, the sounds of today, soft sounds of today's rock. Commodores, Dionne Warwick. Please don't go, Casey and the Sunshine Band. That's, that's a song I remember. That kind of dates it. Puts the quality of some of the songs on there, which is not at the top of the list. Oh, look at that, an old watch. 
I, I highly doubt this is going to be a Rolex. I don't know what this is. Maybe you watch people know. C-O-L-A, maybe? My eyes aren't that good. It looks like C-O-L-A. More tools. Um, check this out. The, someone did upholstery work in this shed at one time because there's upholstery stuff all over the place. And look at these screws. These look like upholstery screws. Someone would probably die to have all these. And there they are. They were in this bag and the bag's just disintegrated with time. I love going through these things. All kinds of neat stuff. That one's jammed. This one, oh, lots of tire stuff there, Zerk fittings. Yeah, there's some neat stuff in here. Don't want to drop these screws. Um, International Delight. I don't know what that is. It's a cool container, though. Oh, look at this extension. This has seen better days. Wow, somebody probably used an impact gun with that. Hard to find hits. Whoa. Very hard to find in here. One other thing about this, this shed, garage, whatever you want to call it that it's in, it's extremely dark. Um, you would think because the back of the shed, it's so bright sun back there, that the light would get in here, but it doesn't. It is dark. Um, this is as bright as it gets. And when you look under the hood, you get to see just how dark it is. Now this is with the light from the phone on. You just can't see anything. Luckily I have lights with me, but it just makes this job all the more interesting. Um, one other thing I want to show you, and I'll get back to work. A gas pedal. It's a uh, barn door hinge screwed to the floor. That's something I've never seen before. And there's the starter button above it. The dash is completely intact. Completely. There's the speedo uh, hole in the windshield. There's a data plate up there that people might think is for the truck. It's actually for the seat. These, these Dodges had adjustable seats. To the left was soft, to the right is hard. And that's a little plate telling you how that works. And this was a, here's the, the data plate for the truck right there. Anyway, it's getting hotter by the minute. So I gotta get going um, and get this thing running. Okay, this thing's been sitting so long that the first thing I'm gonna do is uh, put mystery oil in the cylinders. Um, I can't tell if it's seized because I can't get at the crank because it's so far in the mud, but I'm not even gonna try to spin it until I get mystery oil in there to loosen it up. Super easy to get at being a flathead. All right. That's cool. What is that?
That one's a little better. Not quite so dry. Turn it on. So this thing just popped off. I thought that was some kind of funky air filter cover. It's not. Look at inside that carburetor. Man. Oh, the chances of this running just went down a little bit. We'll see. We'll see. What's going on with this thing? Okay, back to work. All right, I'm trying to get this thing moving, but it's it's clearly seized. I tried the driver's side. See if I could get a good grip there. And I did, but I couldn't move it. And I'm trying the passenger side and uh, not moving there either. And I can't, there's not much clearance to get a pipe on it. So I'm kind of stuck. It does appear to be seized. There's a little pipe. This will give me another few inches of pressure. Let me try that. <clears throat> now it's seized. Ah, this thing is seized tight. I'm getting a real good grip on it. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunately. Yeah. No go, no go. All right, it's gonna be a little more trouble. Probably have to pull it out of the shed to take it any further. I am back at it again today, working on the Dodge, the 50 Dodge, um, the engine doesn't give me a lot of access to uh, the, the crankshaft in order to try to get it unseized. So I'm going to have to do some dismantling. I know for sure that the fan's going to have to come off. Um, if the fan either doesn't come off or doesn't give me the access I need, the radiator is going to have to come out. But in order to get the radiator out, the hood's going to have to come off. The hood's bolted down on each side there and here. Looks re relatively new bolts up there, but who knows. Um, so that's the, the task at hand for right now. The fan is out. See that? Fan's out. There it is right there. Four bolts. 
The clearance was super tough. Can't touch the radiator because um, you might damage it. So the clearance was super tough, but I do have better access now to the pulley. I don't know if it's enough access to do what I need to do. It's got a huge dent in it. I don't know if you can see that. Probably, yeah, you probably can. I'm not sure why in the world I would have a dent down there, but it does. Um, but I'm gonna try to work with that and see if I can get the engine to spin without having to pull the radiator out. While I've been in here, a storm has moved in. So I'm in this like shanty shack with no electricity. It's dark. Um, and uh, now I've got the noise on the roof of the rain. At one time, this place had light. It's got lights in it, but probably long ago, the electricity was cut. So back to it. This storm is crazy. But can't be distracted. Got to get back to work. It's unseized. Whew. I'm telling you, it was not easy. Just for the clearance and the fact that the pulley is not made of good material, so I had to really be careful, but it's moving. Moved about a quarter turn. I have to keep going all the way around. It's gonna take a while because the access is so bad. Um, but I'm thrilled. I'm even hearing a little compression in the cylinders because they're filled with mystery oil right now. So uh, I'm hearing some compression as the mystery oil gets moved around. So all good so far. So I hooked the battery up. This is this is interesting. I hooked the battery up and I started hearing this strange noise after a few minutes and I realized it was the radio. Um, you know, these old guys have tubes in them and after they warm up, sometimes they make noise. And that one was making noise. It's not doing it anymore. Um, I turned it off and it stopped, stopped the noise, but that was crazy. Um, the starter switch does not work, so I'm going to have to jump the starter. All right, I'm by myself today, so um, I'm going to try to turn this over from inside the cab with the starter button. Success. Excellent. Turned over, blew some oil out. Fantastic. I'm going to try it one more time before I call it a day. Beautiful. This thing is turning over great now. You haven't gotten the greatest view of what this truck looks like because the, the garage, barn, whatever you call this thing is so tight. So I'm going to back up absolutely as far as I go. I can go and give you a view of it. It's very cool. Very cool. I've jacked it up on this side just a little bit. It was even farther in the mud than it is now. This garage is relatively dry, so to see the truck sunk so far in the mud gives you an indication of how long it's been in here. But it's a cool rig. These Dodges are really neat trucks. It's supposed to say Dodge on the front there, and it's supposed to have a ram hood ornament. It's interesting that this appears to be... Oh, look at that shine. Wow. But this one's painted. And this one's painted. Isn't that interesting? Huh. This was probably what was used to drag it in here, which is a little bit of a bummer. That means it wasn't running when it was brought in here, and it's been in here a long time. So who knows just how long this thing's been, been sitting in here.
The next step I'm going to do is clean up the plugs. When I was spinning it over to get the mystery oil out of the cylinders, of course, the plugs got soaking, soaking wet with oil. Um, but all I'm doing is spraying the, the plug end with carb cleaner and uh, wiping it down. And they're coming up pretty clean. So I'm going to do those next. Then I'm going to spin it over a little bit more, make sure all the oil's out of there as much as I can. And then we're on to try to get some spark and fire it. Like most of these old rigs, the uh, cap is held on with some clips. So I undid the clips. I don't know if you can see that, but it's really bad in there. Really bad. Probably one of the worst ones I've seen in quite some time. It's super dirty. Um, it must not have sealed well because a lot of dirt got up in there. So I'm going to have to spend some time cleaning that. It's intact under here. The points are there, the condenser's there, the rotor's there. But this is going to take a few minutes to get cleaned up. All right. So I'm just going to spray some. carb cleaner in here. The carb cleaner won't hurt the Bakelite nor the brass. This one is really, really bad. And it's just filthy. Hopefully it'll conduct. It's very bad. Let's take a look at the rotor. Rotor's in good shape. I'm going to turn the key on. Battery's hooked up and see if I can get some spark out of these points. He's on. I haven't jumped the ignition or anything. The wires are still all attached. Nothing. Nothing at all. But that could be a wiring problem as much as it's the point, so I'm going to get my ignition jump. Some, something weird's going on here. I can run six volts right from the battery. And it's not registering. Well, unfortunately, my mic quit. Um, so I'm going to try to talk loud the rest of this video because I'm in the middle of nowhere. There's nothing I can do about it. And it's not the batteries. The mic, mic broke. So we'll have to deal with it. It's, it's pretty hard to get in here and clean these points. Everything is in the way. Um, and it's so far down in there and it's so dark. I could take the points out, but I really don't want to do that because um, then I'll have to mess with the dwell and all that um, with a feeler gauge. And I don't want to do that unless I have to. So I'm really lost. I can't forget about getting sparks at the points. I can't get spark to the distributor. It's making no sense. I really don't know what's going on because I'm running direct from the battery. So I'm just going to put the original wire back together, but unfortunately it's a house wire. Um, solid strand, single strand house wire. So and with a house clamp on a wire nut. So I'm trying to get that back together. All right, looks like it's back together. Nothing. It's just completely dead in this distributor, and I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I run directly to the points. No spark. I've cleaned everything. There's just no spark. What a bear. What a bear. But I finally get spark in the points. About the only thing I did differently to get spark in the points was messed with that connection right there. See that black wire that comes out of the condenser? I pulled that out. It wasn't dirty, but I cleaned it off. I put it back in. It's a spring clip fit, and that seems to have fixed it. So I've got spark in the distributor, 
Now I'm gonna put the plugs back in, put the cap rotor in, see if we can get this thing to fire. Now I've been at this so long that my phone's going dead. So I, I got this thing, this is thing super cool. Top Don Jump Surge JS2000. It's a jump box for like battery, for start, for uh, car batteries. It's a little thing though, but it also does phones. And I find that when I'm here on site, this thing will keep my phone charge all day. It also has a light in it. So I found this thing to be super cool. It's light and it really does. I mean, my, my truck was dead the other day. This thing started it. Um, so it's more powerful than it looks really for its size. So I don't know, I just thought I'd bring that up since I'm using it right now. All the plugs are in, got them all cleaned up nice. Now this makeshift air cleaner thing needs to come off. Doesn't look too nice down here. I cleaned it up quite a bit, it was a lot worse. It's a little bit of oil in here because at one point I poured marble mystery oil right down the throat try to loosen up the valves and none of them are sticking so perhaps it helped okay it's buttoned all back up um, it's gonna be a little tricky we're gonna try to fire it gonna be a little tricky because I can't figure out how to hook the starter trigger to this there's no like separate connection on the starter for like hooking a trigger because it's got that starter switch and it all works inside the starter so i'm gonna have to try it from inside whereas the carburetor is way over here so this is going to be weird but i'll do the best i can so i'm priming it just a little bit put some in the bowl Let's see if it'll fire with that little i don't want to put a lot in Okay, that was dumb. I forgot to hook the ignition up. So let's try it now. the plugs every one of them had some marvel mystery oil on it it could be that's why it's not firing i don't know but i took them all out i'm going to turn it over some more so we can blow any more out of there i doubt it because there's just there's not a lot in there but we'll see the stand now um, because we have to have someone inside working the starter button and I need to be out here with the carburetor um, there's no way to hook a trigger up so I gotta hook this back. all right we're gonna give it another try this is really proving to be challenging Okay, let's give this one a whirl. Yeah. Oh, 
hold on. You see we're going to fill the bowl up. So it'll run a little longer than two seconds. Now, you need to look, can you knock on the window when you want me to take my foot off? Yeah. Do that. Okay. Ready? Go ahead. All right, another try. fan back on. I had to take that off to get it unseized. Now I'm putting some coolant in it. Whoops, that's water. I'm going to put coolant, not water. Of course, I spilled the coolant, not the water. That's how it works with these things. Putting a little coolant in here. But again, all that, gonna put a little water in. The fan belt is in really bad shape. So I don't I think the fan belt's probably gonna snap within two minutes. But we both have slaved on this thing and we really want to see it run one more time. All right, so by no means do I have enough in it to run all day, but I've got enough to idle for two or three minutes. Look at the size of that radiator cap. That is big time. When it started before, I didn't even have to prime it. It just started on its own. So we'll see if that same trick works again. time, babe. Ran great, 
Well, I can't say it ran great. It ran. It ran. Um, it almost idles. It idles at a high RPM, around 1,200 it idles. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. This one was a struggle and a half. But we did it. We got it going. So we're back. Um, it, was, it was a lot of fun. It was a success. But I have to give a shout out to my partner, Christina. It was 97 degrees out there today. In that shed, it was probably 100. And in the cab of that truck, it was at least 105. And she hung out there and kept on going with that starter button and just was fantastic. We, I, I couldn't have done it without her. Um, make sure you subscribe. I have a really insane video coming up for July 4th. Um, it's a 51 Chevy that was burned up in a uh, barn fire uh, a long time ago and it's just been sitting there ever since. I came across this thing and uh, we, we work on it and we try to get it running and you'll see all that if you subscribe. Have a good day.